Next up on our tour are the energy organelles, the mitochondria, and the chloroplasts. So for a cell to make all of its proteins and to perform its other functions, it needs energy. So let's look at the energy organelles. The first we'll talk about is the mitochondrion, and this is found in all types of eukaryotic cells. It is known as the power plant for the cell or for the factory. It is a double membrane organelle, and it harnesses energy from the chemical breakdown of food molecules. This process of breaking down food and releasing energy is called cellular respiration. And all eukaryotic cells are able to perform cellular respiration. Whether we're talking about plants or animals or fungi or protists, they're all able to do this. And so what is cellular respiration? Well, it is the metabolic pathway that recharges ATP molecules from the breakdown of food molecules. If you remember when we had talked about ATP molecules, I had described them as rechargeable batteries of the cell. Well, this is the charging station. This is where those molecules of ADP come and get energized back to their full energy form of ATP. Now, when we look a bit at what these organelles look like, they have two membranes, an outer membrane and an inner membrane. Surprisingly, the inner membrane is actually larger than the outer membrane. So you'll see a lot of these bends and alleys and, and internal structures within the mitochondria made by that folded inner membrane. These organelles, again, are found in all eukaryotic cells. In contrast, chloroplasts, which are the next type of energy organelle, chloroplasts, they only are found in plant cells and certain protist cells, only in photosynthetic organisms. Just like the mitochondria, they are double membrane organelle. And when we look at the structure within the chloroplasts, we see these stacks of green disks. The stack of disks is known as a granum, or plural, they are grana. And they are made of thylakoids. which are the names of the individual green disks, and then they're surrounded by this thick fluid filling of the chloroplast known as stroma. These structures will become more important when we start talking about the details of photosynthesis itself. Now in the process of photosynthesis, carbon dioxide and water is converted into sugar and oxygen gas using the energy from light. The pigment chlorophyll enables photosynthesis. It's chlorophyll that allows for the absorption of light to occur, which then powers that conversion of water and carbon dioxide into sugars and oxygen gas. So structurally speaking, there are two membranes, an outer membrane and an inner membrane. And inside of that inner membrane, we have the stroma, which is that liquid-filled interior, and then these stacks of thylakoid discs making a granum. The energy organelles are the best examples of organelles that likely arose from other organisms at a previous time. So what I mean by this is eukaryotic cells in general are considered to have evolved from prokaryotes when a larger prokaryote engulfed a smaller one. In and of itself, this isn't all that surprising. It's very common for larger cells to engulf smaller cells like this. But then usually what happens is the smaller cell is digested and broken down into its individual components. When well, the case of mitochondria and chloroplasts, it seems like these previously free living cells became permanent internal compartments. So the mitochondria and chloroplasts, they were captured and they formed an endosymbiotic relationship with the host cell.
it was actually believed that this is why both mitochondria and chloroplasts are double membrane organelles, because if they had their own membrane and then they were engulfed by the larger cell, there would now be two layers of boundaries or two layers of membrane for that engulfed cell. What other evidence is there to support this endosymbiotic origin of organelles? Well, surprisingly, both mitochondria and chloroplasts also have their own DNA. And this DNA that they have is distinct from the DNA that's found in the nucleus. Mitochondria and chloroplasts also have their own ribosomes, which are more similar to bacterial ribosomes. than they are to eukaryotic ribosomes. So these, along with the fact that they are double membrane organelles, are some of the lines of evidence to support the theory of the endosymbiotic origin of the eukaryotic cells. Now this word endosymbiotic, endo means inside or internal, sim means together, and bio means living. So living together internally, this is what the term endosymbiotic means. That's the end of our discussion of the energy organelles. Next, we'll talk just a bit about the support and movement structures of the eukaryotic cell.